It was always going to be a risky assignment, but Australian construction engineer Robert Pether thought helping rebuild war-torn Iraq was an important and noble job. He doesn't think that now. In April, Robert was thrown in jail. An overcrowded Baghdad prison cell will be his home for at least the next five years. After that, he'll only be freed if he pays a 12 million US dollar fine. And his crime? Well, it seems to be nothing he's done. Rather, the building company he works for is in a dirty business dispute with its client. And Robert, caught in the middle, has become collateral damage. Uh, I went to the park. You went to the park? Oh, uh, which one? For the past six months, this has been the extent of the contact between Robert Pether and his cherished family. Rod sent me a kite. Did he? Sporadic phone calls from a Baghdad jail. In late August, the 46-year-old Australian engineer was sentenced to spend the next five years behind bars. Robert's wife, Desiree, had to break the shocking news to their kids, first to eldest son, Flynn. I just said, Daddy just got sentenced to five years and just the look on his face and the, you know, sorry, the, like a punch in the stomach and we just couldn't believe it. And we didn't get to speak to him until the next afternoon and he was just devastated. No one could imagine Robert's dream job of the past four years would end this way. He was the lead engineer on the near complete headquarters of the Central Bank of Iraq, a billion dollar architectural feat towering above Baghdad. But thanks to a contract dispute, Robert's prized job would prove a fast track to an indescribable hell as he and his Egyptian colleague, fellow engineer Khaled Radwan, were suddenly arrested, convicted, and sentenced to jail and fined a whopping 12 million US dollars. I can't imagine that you ever imagined he'd land up in jail. Not in a million years. These guys are employees, and the idea that employees are being held accountable for a dispute between two companies is, is just astonishing. Can you update us on any interaction that we've had with the UN Working Group on Arbitrary... Robert's and... jailing over a business deal turned sour is also unthinkable to London-based lawyer Peter Griffin. Unfortunate recent developments in the case He's gathered together an international legal team, all working pro bono, to get Robert out of jail. Is there any way Rob has done the wrong thing? I, I'm absolutely convinced that Robert Pether has done nothing wrong. This was a kidnapping. This was a, a state-sponsored kidnapping in order to gain leverage in some other dispute. But Robert Pether is innocent. While working in the Middle East, Robert, with wife Desiree and children Flynn, Oscar and adopted daughter Nala, have based themselves in Ireland. Oh, your turn again. But little did they know that in April this year, their happy and secure life would drastically change. Robert was in Dubai when he was invited back to Iraq to attend a special meeting with the governor of the bank. It was all going really, really well. It was nearly the end of the project and then it just all went to hell in a handbasket. The reason given for the governor's last minute meeting with Robert and fellow engineer Khaled was to resolve a contract dispute between Robert's employer, Dubai-based CME Consulting and the bank. Since September last year, the bank had refused to pay its construction bills. Frustrated by months of failed negotiations, CME ordered all its staff off the project and out of the country 
by the 30th of March. That's when the governor extended his invitation to Robert and Robert's company agreed to delay its withdrawal by a week. When you learned that Robert had been invited back to Iraq to resolve this, how positive was that? How much hope did you have that things would now be smoother and, and the project would continue? Well, we did think it was good, a good thing because we're now, OK, we're not pulling out at this point in time. We've given them another chance. Let's hope we can get this resolved. And we're all still in work. Rod Irwin was the health and safety officer on the site and was in Baghdad the day Robert and Khalid were scheduled to meet with the governor. No one suspected the meeting was a setup. There was no meeting. These guys just came out of the shadows, armed guards, most them away. Back in the office, took their computers, mobile phones, everything. You know, it must have been absolutely terrifying. Everybody was distraught. Did anyone describe to you what the, the tone of that arrest was? They weren't resisting as such because there's no, no way you can. Well, they just shoot you. They're armed. You know, if you try and resist them, they'll put a bullet in you. He disappeared the day of the, the meeting. Normally, he would communicate with us several times in a day, and we hadn't heard from him. We knew something had happened. Robert was in jail. But with the nightmare ever worsening, Desre would not get to speak to him until day 22 of his incarceration. I got a phone call and I picked it up and I could hear crying and I'm like, what's happened, what's happened? By this time, Robert was incredibly unwell. He was delirious, he was blacking out, he was severely dehydrated and he lost 15 kilos in the first two weeks. He was not charged until over 120 days after he had been arrested. So this is, this is a sham, this is a window dressing exercise because the Iraqis are slowly coming to understand that the eyes of the world are on them. Robert and Khalid were eventually charged with fraud the claim being they wrongfully received funds intended for a subcontract company that was yet to start on the project. It's important to note that uh, we've been charged with fraud, but fraud must have intentions. There was never any intention of fraud. From jail and from Ireland, Robert and Desiree claim to have the paperwork that proves the allegation wrong. But in late August came Robert and Khaled's shock conviction and with it, their five-year prison sentence and 12 million US dollar fine. It literally took the judge 15 minutes and not one shred of their evidence to prove that they were innocent was accepted. Robert fondly considered Iraq as the place where he produced his best work. But now, as he serves time in a tiny cell with 24 other men, it only brings despair. Our whole family, it's like an explosion has gone off. As Desiree and I talk, Robert calls in from jail. And um, this, is the, this is Robert on the phone, sorry. Hey. Hey, how are you? I'm good, how are you? So as not to risk upsetting the Iraqi authorities, I've agreed not to ask Robert any questions. But the strain he's under is clear. Yeah. Just missing you guys too much. Yeah, we're missing you so much. But, you know, we're, we're there with you every day in spirit. We're right next to you. I know, I know. For that, I'm glad. Yeah. And grateful. Yeah, how are you feeling? Uh, tough day. Tough day? Yeah, just hard at the moment. We have an array of violations going from, you know, arbitrary detention, arrest without a warrant, lack of formal charge, breach of the right to access to counsel, coupled with, uh, um, and I do not want to go into great detail on this, allegations of torture. In all, lawyer Peter Griffin accuses Iraq of 28 human rights violations against Robert which the United Nations is currently investigating. Peter is convinced his client is the victim of dark and deceitful dealings, 
dealings that, incredibly, have been assisted by the actions of an Australian company. So are you suggesting that they knew he'd be arrested? Forty-six-year-old Australian Robert Pether has been judged to be a criminal and with his colleague Khalid Radwan has been sentenced to spend the next five years in an Iraqi jail. Robert is not a drug dealer, nor is he a violent offender. He is a revered engineer, and his conviction is the result of a contract dispute between his employer, CME, and the Central Bank of Iraq. For the past four years, CME has been building the bank's state-of-the-art headquarters, with Rob as its chief engineer. When he was arrested in April this year, Robert's company abandoned the project. The allegations that have been made against Rob are, in essence, allegations made against CME. But I think their first priority now will be to get their, get their men out of jail in Baghdad. According to Robert's lawyer, Peter Griffin, trouble started last September when the bank stopped paying CME invoices but expected the building work to continue for free. It was as CME was preparing to leave Iraq that Robert and Khalid were invited to try one last time to resolve the dispute. According to Robert's wife, Desiree, this invitation was a trap. They've literally been used as pawns in a game of chess. And they were the two key engineers on the project, basically taking them, punish their company for not complying with what the client wanted. So right from the word go, the whole purpose of getting them back into the country was to arrest them. Adding to the intrigue and suspicion of a setup was the speed with which a subcontracting company, Meinhardt, was on site ready to replace CME. It is very, very unusual that Meinhardt would have had a team of engineers ready to replace Rob and Khaled at 24 hours notice. Very surprising. So are you suggesting that they knew he'd be arrested? Well, I think given the difficulties in getting to Baghdad, it's hard to see any other explanation as to how they could be on site within 24 hours of the arrests. Meinhardt was founded in Melbourne and has built extraordinary skyscrapers all over the world. Its Dubai outfit was always going to join CME to help build the bank, but not until about now. On Robert's arrest, though, the Iraqi Central Bank had them ready to take over the site. The suspicion is to sidestep paying the money owed to CME. It was this company, Meinhardt, that gave a sworn statement to the court alleging a contract breach by CME, which in turn saw Robert convicted of fraud. Robert maintains this allegation was false, a lie that keeps him behind bars. The heart of the matter is the Meinhardt complaint. Um, we weren't given the chance to defend ourselves. I was forced to sign an Arabic document without translation. I was told it was court minutes, not a statement. Meinhardt refused our request for an interview, but in this media release, again accused Robert's company of contract breaches. Meinhardt is still happily building in Iraq, carrying on with business as usual. And in Baghdad legal circles, Robert is considered a lost cause. Former Deputy Chief Judge Munir Haddad was the judge who presided over the trial of Saddam Hussein and sentenced him to death. Now a lawyer, he got privileged access to the sealed court documents of Robert's trial. He defends the Iraqi judicial system, believes the trial was fair, that Robert is guilty of fraud, but is being treated harshly. If you were the judge in this case, would you have convicted Robert Pether, sent him to jail and fined him so much money? If I uh, judge in this case, 
maybe I put him in the prison maybe one year or two years, not more. Can you understand why it looks like it was a kidnapping, that it looks like it was a set-up? Instead of a meeting, he was taken into custody. I think so. They want to cut him. They want to uh, arrest him and uh, judge him in the court. Desperate, Desre and the legal team are begging for support. We need help because logic's not working. Common sense, decency, humanity, none of it's working. It's, it's as if he was abducted by aliens. There's just no rhyme or reason to it. I know you probably find this question offensive, but is there any chance that Robert has done the wrong thing? 110% on my kids, I can tell you that Robert did nothing wrong. Robert Pether says he cannot afford to pay the $12 million fine. If he cannot pay that fine, do you expect that he will ever go home? No, they, they keep him the present from a long, a long time. I would love to be there with you guys. Um, I just don't know how long it'll be until I can be. Yeah. Yeah. I will get you home soon anyway. Uh... It's a promise to Robert the Pether family is doing its best to deliver. Flynn. Love you, Daddy. Love you, Daddy. Bye bye. And his brother Oscar. Life's pretty boring without a dad. Missing their father terribly. I just kind of wait yeah. every week to call you. That's about it. Little eight year old Nala fills her dad in on life as it continues for her. I start dance. Dance? Ballet or? Hip hop. Hip hop? No, oh, how did I know you'd be doing hip hop? <laughs> he's a gentle giant and he's always doing things for other people, and this is just soul destroying for him, and it's so hard to see it happening. Desiree prays the warm sound of their children's voices will comfort and sustain Robert until his next phone call from jail. For now, there is nothing else. Bye bye, sweetheart. I love you, chickadee. I love Blow you, too. Kiss. Blow me kiss. Did you get that, Daddy? Yep. Oh, I did. Yeah. Did you get that one? Did I get it? Yep, she got it. You know, when they first got arrested, we thought it would be over in 24 hours. And here we are over five months later, and it's just getting worse. It's The nightmare is just getting worse. Naturally, we ask the Australian government about Robert's plight. The Foreign Minister, Maurice Payne, said she was concerned about the case and had spoken in the strongest terms to her Iraqi counterpart. Disappointingly, though, she didn't feel the need to appear in this story. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au and the 9Now app.